So yesterday I was scrolling through a bunch of websites for inspiration when I came across this frame.xyz site and specifically this section here where you can see the background of these cards are being cut out by this cool geometric pattern in the background that allows you to see through the card into these glowing orbs behind it. Of course, I had to jump into the inspector here and start to try to figure out exactly how they were doing it. And in the process of that, I came across a few techniques I've never explored before and figured out how to get this to work. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through that entire process and show you how to replicate this effect on your own website. And as a bonus, I have a really cool adaptation of this method that I came up with that combines this with glass morphism to create an effect that I've never really seen before and I'm pretty excited about. If this sounds like something you'd like to learn how to do, then stick around and let's get started. I've gone ahead and set up some of the basics here with just a section and some cards so you didn't have to see me doing the boring parts, but I do wanna cover everything in this video and I'm gonna to try to take it slow to make sure I explain everything thoroughly. So let's take a look first at what's set up here. Obviously we have our section on the page. Inside that section is a wrapper. On this wrapper, I've added a class of knockout wrapper and I've done just a few things inside of that class, including setting it to display grid with a three column grid inside of it and 16 pixels of gap. I've also gone down here under position and set the position of this element to relative, which ends up being pretty important down the line. Now inside of that, I just have three cards. Each one of these cards has a class of knockout card. Inside of it, there's text for the title or knockout title and the text underneath it, which is just knockout text. Here on the design card class, all I've done here is just set the display to flex. And again, under position, I've changed this to relative. So this is a pretty basic layout that you've probably done hundreds of times. Now I did go back and forth debating on how much of this to do here inside the editor using our global styles controls and how much of it to do in CSS. I tested both of these methods, but I actually found that trying to do some of this inside the editor here inside global styles presented more of a challenge, especially as I was trying to teach it along the way. Not everything lines up perfectly, and really you have to know the underlying fundamentals of the CSS that's going on in order to click the right buttons in the global styles controls anyways. So I think we're just gonna leave it here as far as builder controls, and we're gonna do all the rest of this in CSS. I'll try to point out along the way where there are things you could have done here inside the builder, but if I was doing this on a real project, I'd probably end up doing a lot of this with CSS anyways. So let's go ahead and save this page. We'll jump to the front end, here into the customizer, into our additional CSS, and we'll use this panel to write off our CSS so we can see the live preview. The first thing I wanna tackle are these kind of glowing colors behind the cards here. You can see we have kind of a green glow and an orange glow over here. Now in our design, we're gonna use a purple color and a blue color, but it's the same effect. Now, of course, I could just save this out as a background image, upload it to my page and call it done. But I actually had somebody request that I show how to do this with CSS. So let's go ahead and knock that out first. If you remember, we had a class of knockout wrapper for the wrapper that goes around the cards. Just to show you what that is, I'll do a border here of one pixel solid. And you can see that's just a border that wraps around all of these cards. So in order to create the glows, we're actually gonna use before and after pseudo elements. So I'm just gonna change this knockout wrapper class to have the before pseudo element attached to it. Now, anytime we're using a pseudo element, we need to give it content. In this case, the content's just gonna be blank. So I'll just add two quote marks there. You can see this has shifted things around on our screen. We actually wanna position this pseudo element absolutely. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the position to absolute, which takes it out of the flow of this section here. And you can see everything's back aligned the way it needs to be. Now we can't see anything on the page yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and just add a background color of red. So whenever we do have something on the page, you'll be able to see what it is. Cause I know it can be kind of hard to imagine what's happening right now. Once you've done this a few times, you start to realize what's going on in the background and you can kind of picture it in your mind, but it is hard here when you're trying to figure it out for the first times. Now, in order for this to work, we do need to give it a size. So I'm just going to say that it's a hundred percent of the height of that container, which is going to be fine for our case. And instead of giving it a width, I'm going to give it an aspect ratio. So I'll do aspect ratio, and we're just going to do one over one. 
Now you can see it's appeared on our screen now and it's been given a width that's equal to its height because of the aspect ratio we put on it. Now you can see exactly how it's positioned here, which it looks like it's more towards the bottom, but that's just because inside of our card design, there's more padding on the top of it. This is actually, if we went back to our knockout wrapper, I'll just go ahead and put that in here again. We do border one pixel solid. You can see that this is filling up the entire height of that wrapper there. So we'll go ahead and take that off again and we'll continue working on our pseudo element. Now, of course, we want it to be round and not a square. So to do that, I'm gonna do a border radius and we'll do 100 VW just so we know that it's big enough that it will always make it a circle. Now to get that kind of glowing effect, what we wanna do is a filter. So here I'm gonna do filter we're gonna do blur. We'll open and close our parentheses and I'll start out with something like 100 pixels. Once I add that filter, now you can see how we're getting this look. Now, of course, we don't want this to be red, so let's go ahead and hop back into our Figma file and grab a couple colors here. The first one I'll grab is this purple color, just copy it to my clipboard, and I'm gonna swap this red out for that color there. And we see we have this nice glowing purple color. Now it's not positioned from the left and the right exactly like I'd like it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a coordinates of left and I'm gonna say maybe 25%. And that's just gonna move it more towards the center. It's gonna move it 25% of the way over across this entire container area. So that takes care of our before element, but we need a second one here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. We'll paste it here and we're gonna change this from before to after. Let's go ahead and swap out the color first so we can see the difference on the screen. I'll grab this other one, copy that color, go back into the customizer and paste that in. And they're overlapping each other. So what I need to do is just change this coordinates from left to right. And we can see now it's over coming over 25% from the right hand side instead of the left hand side. Now we could clean this CSS up a bit. There are a lot of properties here that these two share. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We'll just do knockout wrapper before comma knockout wrapper after. Open and close our brackets here. And we can just copy in any of these things that are consistent between both the before and after pseudo elements. So we can see they both have content. They both have a position. They both have height. They both have this aspect ratio and they both have the same border radius and filter blur. What's different between both of them is this coordinates. On this one, it's left and on this one, it's right. And their background color. So for one, it's the purple color and for the other, it's the blue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab everything that's similar here. We'll cut it out of this selector and paste it in here. And we can delete it out of this other one as well. Now, this isn't totally necessary, but it does make our CSS a little bit cleaner. And if we ever wanted to change these aspect ratios, let's say we wanted them to be two over one, so they were wider, we could change all that here in just one area and not have to change it in both. Now, for our case, I think one over one works just fine. So we're gonna leave it just like that. Now, I do see that I have some Z index issues. It looks like these blurs are going on top of my text. I'm just gonna fix that real quick. This is definitely something we could have taken care of inside the editor but I'm gonna go ahead and select the knockout card and then every element inside of it. And we'll just do a Z index of 10, just to make sure that all that text stays on top. I'll go ahead and grab this. I'm just gonna paste it out of the way because we don't really need to be looking at it as part of this tutorial. Like I said, we could have definitely taken care of that inside the editor. So the next thing we need to do is figure out how to get these icons into our cards and have them cut out of the background. We're actually gonna do this with a mask so let's go ahead and get started on that now. We're gonna do knockout card. And again, we need to do this with a pseudo element. I'm just gonna choose the after, although it doesn't matter. You could use the before or after. We're only gonna need one in this case. So I just chose the after. Like always, we need some kind of content. I'm just gonna make this blank. We need to position it. I'm gonna go ahead and position it absolutely. Now, since we made the knockout card position relative, which I showed you back in here when we had this design card, this knockout card class, it's going to be positioned absolutely relative to this card design, which is important. We're gonna do an inset value of zero. That just means top left, bottom right of zero. Up here, we did a left of 25% and a right of 25%. We could do left, right, top, bottom, but inset combines all of those together. And we're just saying, take up the entire space here. 
Just to make sure everything's working, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a background. Again, we'll just do red so we can see it on the page. And we can tell that our pseudo element is taking up the entire card like we want, but we do have some Z index issues here and our border radius that we put on the card is not being respected by this pseudo element. So let's go ahead and take care of that. For border radius, instead of setting a 16 pixel border radius again, the card already has one. So I'm gonna do inherit. And then that way this will take on whatever its parent has, which in this case is the knockout card. Since we gave a Z index for our text of 10, I'm just gonna go on here and give this a Z index of five, which kind of places it in between these blurs in the background and this text. There are different ways we could tackle this, but for the purposes of this demo, I think that's just fine. At this point, I think we have everything in place to start taking care of the more complicated part of this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our background color now that you know what's going on there. The first thing we need to do is set up a new background. And here we're gonna do a linear gradient. We're gonna do this as RGBA. We'll do 255, 255, 255. And we're gonna do this at maybe 0.8. This gradient is gonna start at 0%. And then we'll set our second coordinates, which again is gonna be RGBA, 255, 255, 255. We'll do this 100%. And its position is gonna be 100%. So that takes care of the white background we needed. It's just slightly opaque here. We, If we brought that down, you can see more of the color is coming through. I'm gonna leave it maybe at 0.5 because I think that'd be easier to tell on the screen recording here. Now, the next thing we need to do is set up our mask image. This one's a little bit trickier because it doesn't make total sense why you need to set it up this way, but I'll try my best to explain it. What we need here first is another linear gradient. This time I'm gonna do a WebKit linear gradient. It's just gonna be from the top and we're gonna do black comma black. Now you won't see this on the screen right now, but part of what we're gonna be doing for this knockout situation is subtracting the icon from the background. And in order to do this, the right way, we need to have a solid black background here, even though you're not seeing it. Now, after this mask image, we actually need a second image. So we're gonna have to go back in here into our media library so we can get the URL of these icons I uploaded. And here, we'll just start with this paintbrush one. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the URL. We'll go back in here into our customizer. And after this comma, I'm gonna type in URL and I'm gonna open and close parentheses and open and close single quote marks. And we'll go ahead and paste in the URL to our icon here. Now we're not seeing something on the page quite yet. We have a few more properties we need to add. Since we added two different mask images, we need to give two different sizes. So for mask size, I'm gonna do 100 by 100. That will cover this black gradient that obviously we still can't see in the background, but all this is doing is saying, hey, make that black background take up 100% of the space, both vertically and horizontally. And then we need to give a value for our icon itself. For now, I'm just gonna say 150 pixels and we can adjust that once we have it on the screen. We also need to do a mask repeat of no repeat. We also need to do a mask position of center for our black gradient. And then we're gonna do top right for our icon. So you can see again here, when we're doing two different things, we're doing center for our first mask image, which was this black linear gradient. And then we do a comma, and then we're doing top right for our second image, which is this icon here. Now, the last property we need to put in here to get this to all show up is mask composite, which if I'm honest, is a property I never heard of before until I saw this demo and kind of figured out what they were doing. The value here is gonna be subtract. And once we put that in there, we can see this icon is coming through now and it's actually being subtracted out of the background of this card. We can tell that because when it shows up over here, there's kind of this purple background. And when it shows up over here, we can see more of this teal color. Now this one, we can't see too much because these colors aren't showing up far enough across the design. So maybe we go back to this aspect ratio and we make it 1.5 or even two over one. And maybe we'll just adjust this slightly so they're not so far over, maybe 15% and 15%. So now we can see a little bit of this one over here. Maybe we even go less, 10% and 
Now I do think this image is too big here, so we can go back down to our mass size and we can make that adjustment. Maybe we make these just 100 pixels, which puts them up in the corner. That looks a little bit too small, so maybe in between at 125. Now I don't like how it's positioned right here at the corner. I actually want it to look like it's kind of falling off the edge. So instead of just top right, I'm gonna to do top minus 20 pixels and we'll do right minus 20 pixels. And that way it's kind of going off the edge of the screen. Now, of course, we're gonna to wanna to change the icon for each one of these. There are all kinds of ways we could go about doing this. And if you were working with the query loop or something like that, you'd have to do even more advanced things. But here, just for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna cheat this a little bit, just so we can see each one of the different icons on the different cards. So what we're gonna do here is just add knockout card, and we'll do nth of type two, and then after. So essentially what we're doing is saying, hey, select our second knockout card and then select that pseudo element. So all we need to do here is go to this mask image and this is what we need to change out for the second card. Instead of the paintbrush, we need the next icon, which is here. So we'll go ahead and copy that URL, go back into this nth of type two and paste in that URL. And now you can see we have that icon. We'll go ahead and copy this entire selector again paste it in and change the nth of type to three. Go back to our media library, grab the URL for our last icon, and then we'll paste it in here. So now we can see that life raft in there. I think we're almost done here, although I do feel like these colors are a little bit bright. So I'm gonna go back up here to where we made our little glows, and I'm gonna change this opacity, maybe 0.5 might look a little bit better and more subtle, and I think that does look quite a bit better. Obviously this last one's harder to see because there's less color on that side, but I kinda like that this is a subtle effect. The frame example here has very thin lines, which I really like about this design. I wanted to do something a little bit different for this demo, so we just went with some icons here. But there are all kinds of different ways you could use this. Obviously, those geometric shapes work well. These icons look nice. So I'd really be interested in seeing what kinds of things y'all come up with. In fact, as I started tinkering around with this, I came up with one other idea that I thought I'd share with you, which is just gonna cause us to have to adapt this just a little bit. I'll go ahead and publish these changes. We're gonna go back into the back end. We'll go to all pages and we'll open up our knockout cards. And I'm just gonna make a couple tweaks here. For this section, I'm gonna scroll down here and add a background image. So we'll go here and I'll grab this one from my media library. And we'll just make sure that this attachment is set to fixed. Now, because we don't have an entire page here to scroll, I'm just gonna make this section quite a bit taller just so we can see the scrolling effect here that I wanna go after. So I'll just go into this section class, we'll go into our spacing, and I'm gonna just change this to maybe uh, 260 and 260. That might not even give us enough, maybe 360 and 360. That way we have a little bit of room to scroll. We'll go ahead and update that. We'll refresh here in the customizer and we'll start tweaking this CSS a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do for this version is just get rid of the glowing orbs that we had in the background. So we'll go ahead and go here to our knockout wrapper. I'm gonna, instead of deleting it, just wrap it inside of a comment so it no longer shows up on the screen. Now you can still kind of see our icons here, but this background image is definitely very distracting. This is gonna be hard to read and a nightmare for accessibility. But one thing you could do is create the glass morphism effect on these cards. To do that, I'm just gonna go here to knockout card and we'll open and close our brackets here. For this, we wanna do a backdrop filter and we'll do blur and maybe 10 pixels. It doesn't take much. And this creates that kind of glass morphism effect where everything behind this card is kind of blurred. So the image does show through, but it's got this cool blurry effect. What's neat about this image mask in comparison with that, it's almost as if where our icon is is clear glass and the rest of our card is kind of frosted glass. It just gives it a pretty neat effect as you scroll through this page to see the icon kind of show up more or less depending on if the background behind it is darker or lighter. I'm sure we'll find even more ways to play with this idea and come up with some pretty neat concepts.
I fully realized this was a little bit more code heavy and intense than the tutorials I typically do, but when I came across this design that I'd never really seen before and really love, I had to figure out how to do it, and the only way I was going to memorize how to do it was to create a video here. Hopefully you learned a few new tricks today and it wasn't too overwhelming. I would love to see if you use this, how it turns out in production, so make sure to send me a link. I always like checking out what y'all do based off of my tutorials. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, and if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.